And speaking of NASCAR, of course, Stuart Haas are the defending champions in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series uh, with Kevin Harvick. And Gene Haas uh, took the very bold step uh, 18 months ago to announce that he would bring an American Formula One team back to the World Championship. They didn't rush things. They didn't come in in 2015 announcing we're going to take our time and we'll enter the team in the 2016 Formula One World Championship. It's headed by a former Red Bull racer himself, Gunther Steiner. And I had the opportunity to sit down with the team principal and discuss a few things here in Montreal yesterday. So this time next year, Gunther, you won't be sitting here in our NBC Sports studio. You'll be sitting down there in the paddock and more than likely, depending on the calendar, you'll be some five or six races into Haas F1's Formula One career, if you like, or tenure. Uh, where do you think you'll be? Where do you think the team will be some five or six races into the 2016 season? I mean, the, the first thing is that they uh, get there and are well prepared and show off good and uh, in the standings where we'll be, where we'll be finish, I don't really know, but uh, we for sure do not want to be last, you know, so <laughs> uh, we are working hard for that and uh, I think if, if everything goes to plan, maybe we have got a few points by this time. Uh, that would be a, a, a success for us, you know. There are many moving parts to the half F, half F1 story. The headquarters is in Charlotte, North Carolina. You also have a, 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 a satellite base, if you wish, in the UK. You have a presence in the Ferrari factory in Maranello. How has it been so far tying all of that together and making it all work so far in these preliminary stages? It's difficult with uh, how we are approaching it by having a technical partner. We couldn't change their place, but uh, some of the things we couldn't put there to, in Italy. So it would be difficult anyway, but I think it's... I rather have a logistical problem to sort, which is a problem, but there is solutions to it, than having... Uh, making everything yourself and having no experienced people helping you by getting there. Customer cars has been a, a hot topic uh, in, in Formula One lately. Customer cars are not allowed in Formula One. Um, but you, you mentioned your technical alliance and that technical alliance and that partnership is with Ferrari. Could you put a percentage on the car? Uh, how much of it is a Ferrari, if you like? I, I think to explain it a little bit is all the mechanical parts now by regulation you can buy from a, a constructor which is currently in F1. So we get, get all the suspension, the hydraulics, the engine, the gearbox, uh, the electronics, the electrics from Ferrari. The, uh, the things we are building is uh, designing and building is the chassis and all the bodywork. And uh, the bodywork is quite a big part of the car and the biggest development is in the bodywork in the wind tunnel. So putting at the percentage, I would say it's uh, between a 60 and 70 uh, 60 percent, 70 percent uh, Ferrari and 30, 40 percent us. It's percentage wise. So the question that everybody wants to know, and I know that you know this was coming, everybody wants to know who are going to be the two drivers that sit in the very first Haas F1 cars. So I'm not going to ask you such a broad question. I'm going to give you a list of names and I want you to comment on these drivers. There's only one American driver at the moment who holds a super license. That's Alexander Rossi. Correct, yeah. He's, he's doing pretty well in the moment in GP2. We, we noticed Very that, well. yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we are looking... I want to answer your question before you come with all the drivers, you see. So we are looking at a, at, a, uh, at a pool of drivers, the pool everybody knows, or not everybody, a lot of people know the pool which is out there, which we can get into. So we are uh, speaking with them, seeing what they're expecting, seeing how confident they are with our program, because we want them to be confident with us. Speaking of another American driver, do you like Joseph Newgarden? He's now an IndyCar race winner. I think these guys are not bad, but uh, on the downside of them, and I, I don't want to sound negative about it, is they have no F1 experience. And by us being a new team, you know, coming out there, everything is new, we are rookies, and then throwing somebody in like this is a big risk for us, but also for them. We always have to look also after these people because they have a career in front of them. They're young guys, they invested a lot of time and money in their career, and we don't want the people we don't want to be the people which don't deliver, you know, so we need to be careful in everything and we evaluate all this stuff, you know. Here last year, sitting where you are, as your boss and your, your partner, Gene Haas, and we kind of joked around and it made some headlines when we spoke about Danica Patrick. Well, here we are 12 months later and Danica's name is still in the mix, or is it? It, it, it will always be. She's a Stuart Haas driver, you know, she's, uh, uh, I would say, the not the only good female. I mean, there, there is... Uh, in IndyCar, Simona, Simona uh, Silvestro, yeah, she's out there as well. But uh, what, what I think Danica is at, uh, at a stage uh, in her career 
where she's doing good in NASCAR, why would she take the risk to come this way? It's a big risk, it's, uh, you know, and I'm, I mean, she's not 22 anymore, you know, <laughs> she's still young, but uh, at this stage it's difficult to move to another sport, and especially to Formula One, which is, it's not easy for somebody which uh, is young and just coming from GP2. So until she learns the, the trade, maybe she's getting too old for it. Well, on behalf of all the American Formula One fans, it's extremely exciting times for us. We can't wait to broadcast on Haas F1 and have an American Formula One team in the sport f for the first time in 30-odd years. So, on behalf of everyone, good luck. Thank uh, you very much. These next six or seven months are going to go through very fast, go by very fast. So, we watch and we wait with much interest. Gunther Steiner from Haas F1. Thank you very much. Well, I think the first thing they've absolutely got to do is they've got to have a proven Formula One driver in there. It'd be nice to have an American, but they've got to have somebody who knows the ropes, who knows what a Formula One car feels like. Personally, I'd like to see somebody like Nico Hulkenberg, maybe Daniel Ricciardo, or, you know, Jensen Button in there. Somebody that really, really understands what makes a Formula One car tick. Then you can bring somebody on. Putting Joseph Newgarten in there as your guideline would be no good because he has no he has no guideline. You know, he's not. You need a you need a yeah. base line. Steve, you live in Charlotte, North Carolina. You visit the Haas F1 facility regularly. What do you see? How do you feel about this? It's very exciting that we've got it's, an American team coming into Formula it's One. Fantastically exciting. I'm really buoyed by it, and I've been you know to lunch a few times now with Gunther. We've become friends. Um, he realizes that I'm a journalist, and I realize as a team principal, and there are things we're allowed to talk about with the unspoken rules and some we don't but when I have to go to the factory they are making big strides every week the race bay is finished the parts department is finished the composite department is finished the three race bays are in the flat patch is set they are getting up everything to speed to make this to make this happen it'll be very very exciting next year and we don't have to wait very long next year and we don't have to wait long till the